So, um, the title is a little bit misleading. I'm mostly going to talk about the present, but I thought it sounded good to have the future there as well. Um, editing themes used to be like this. You go into the admin, uh, you have some massive panel uh, there, you try to find the setting you need, then you make a change, then you go to the front end, you try to find the place on the front end where uh, that setting applied, and then you hope that your site didn't break um, in the meanwhile. Uh, and if you've got a site with, I don't know, 10,000 users per hour or day, um, that, could be, that could mean quite a few users. Uh, if you actually introduced some um, embarrassing change to your front page uh, by mistake. So, um, customizer to the rescue. Uh, the customizer is a much better way, um, a much better user experience um, when you want to edit your theme, edit your site, preview it instantly, and then um, be able to do, make changes before they actually go live. Um, so I'm not going to go into all the details of the customizer today, but I'm going to talk about how you, with a few simple things, you can make the editing experience better. Um, so first of all, widgets. Most themes have widgets uh, or support for widgets, and especially, I don't know, how many of you have tried uh, Genesis child theme, um, or some other premium theme that had like 10 widget areas. Um, I see a lot of premium themes, they play with the fact that they've got lots of widget areas, so you can put lots of different things in there that the theme developer maybe didn't think about um, in the first place. Uh, but editing widgets in the admin um, with 10 widget areas can be pretty messy, because then you need to figure out which widget area controls which part of your site, and then if you do the change in the admin, the same thing, again, like I just told you about, you have to go to the front end and then um, you might break something. Um, so cool, uh, but in the customizer you can edit widgets. But it can also be messy in the customizer if you've got 10 widget areas and you have to figure out which one is which and then you, there's no correlation, you, you, you don't know whether widget area one is this, or maybe it's in the footer, or, you know. Um, so with one simple change to your, to your theme, uh, you can improve the experience uh, significantly. Uh, in only in recent WordPress versions, you've been able to do this. Uh, simply add theme support for customized selective refresh widgets. And if you're running WordPress 4.7, when you've done this, the experience will be something like this. So we have nice uh, shortcuts uh, next to the widget that take you straight to the widget in the customizer. And now it doesn't matter anymore whether you've called your widget areas just you know, sidebar 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, because you've got nice shortcuts and it takes you straight to the, to the widget. Actually, I found out that apparently in, in already previous WordPress versions, you could shift click on the widget and it would take you to the customizer. But um, how many of you knew about that? No one. Sami knew, yeah. So one out of, what, 200. Uh, okay, so widgets. Okay, widgets are cool, but let's, you want to see more, more stuff about the customizer. So I've got this example uh, related posts component. I've decided to write my own related posts um, code uh, because I wasn't happy with all the 100,000 related post plugins that are on the WordPress uh, plugin directory. Um, the code could be something like this. I've got... Um, uh, getting the categories for the post, and then three posts, displaying three posts that are related to the categories on the current post, and then I've got a nice loop there. Um, but I want to be able to edit uh, the number of posts that are shown uh, 
in at the end of each post because I might have I might want, might want my theme to apply to different sized sites and it might be appropriate on some sites to have just maybe three and somewhere it might be appropriate to have ten related posts. So I want to be able to edit that. Um, the customizer is built around objects. So there's panels, sections, controls. Each control is linked to a setting and then optionally partials which we are uh, going to talk about a little bit later. If you're building a theme, um, you usually don't need to worry about panels, but um, you do often need to think about having a custom section for your controls and then building a control and a setting. So um, all the magic happens inside this customize register hook, and all the, all the code I'm going to be showing in the next slides goes inside this function, customize test, customize register. You can call your function anything you like, of course, but you need to hook it into, into the um, customize register action. And we get this uh, WP customize object that has methods for manipulating the relevant objects, other objects um, in the customizer. So first, let's add a section. Um, WP customize add section. We give it an ID uh, that has to be unique, related post section. And then uh, we can pass in an array of options. You've got to pass in a title because otherwise the section won't have a title, but the priority is optional. But often you want to you want to define a priority because it will affect whereabouts in the customizer uh, pane it will be shown. So we have a section, then we need a setting to store the number of posts. Uh, WP customize add setting uh, is the way to do that and you can get away with just giving it an ID, in this case related posts number, but you should pass a sanitized callback, uh, which in this case is absent, which is um, a built-in WordPress function that turns the number into a positive integer. And um, then you can give a default value, which is a good idea to do in general. And there are lots of other options too, but I'm not going to go into them right now. So we have a setting, and then we need a control to make it visible in the, in the user interface. The control takes the same ID as our setting in this uh, previous slide, related post number, and then um, some options of its own. So it uh, has a type. The type can be anything, any valid HTML5 input type. So you've got number, mm, text, uh, checkbox, anything. Uh, and it can also be uh, select text area. And then there are loads of custom controls that are built into WordPress, like color controls, and then you can build your own as well. But I'm not going to go into that today. Then you need to define the section. So that's the section ID that we had here, related post section, and a label for the control. So we need a section, a setting, and a control. And that's all you need to, to build a, a customizer control of your own. Getting the data is, is straightforward. So in this case, by default, uh, each customizer setting is a theme mod, which is different from an option in that it's stored with a theme. So you can switch themes, and the settings go along with the theme, and it doesn't, if you change a similar setting in another theme, it won't affect the setting in, in, um, in the, the uh, previous theme. You, you can also use options. You can define, if we look at our setting here, mm, there, no, sorry, there, you could add um, a type um, here to, to uh, define 
that you want it to be an option, but that's a good idea if you're building a plugin, but maybe not, not for themes. So uh, back into our original code, we're getting the number of posts, slapping it in the related posts query, and um, now we have a working customizer control. And there you see I'm editing the number of posts, and the preview is refreshing. But there are some issues with this. For one thing, there's a full page load every time we change a setting. Um, which can, if you've got a really heavy site, it can be actually pretty annoying. There's no visible editor shortcuts, uh, and the setting is visible on all pages, which doesn't make sense if we're in a list view. Um, but I, now I'm going to present a solution to the first two points, and the third one will be uh, an exercise for maybe tomorrow's workshop. Uh, so we just register a partial. It takes a little bit more code than registering a setting, but uh, otherwise, it's pretty similar. WP customize selective refresh add partial. We pass it the, the ID of the setting, related post number, and then some options. It needs a selector because the customizer needs to know where on the page that control, uh, where the data lives. Uh, whether container inclusive just defines whether when we refresh it, whether we're refreshing the what's inside the selector or the whole thing. And the most important thing is the render callback, which actually then ref does the refreshing. And the cool thing about this is that um, customizer test display related posts, the function in this case, is exactly the same function I'm using in my template. So you don't need to duplicate the code or the logic for, for displaying your component. One more thing you need to do to the, to the setting is change the transport um, option from the, the default is refresh, but then that will, it will give you a visible editor shortcut, but it will refresh the whole page. So we want it to, um, we want it to only refresh the, our components. So you need to change the transport option to post message. And then we have something like this. Now it's only refreshing the related post section, and uh, everything is fine and dandy. So what's next? Um, this is a quote from the Make WordPress Org blog. There's a lot of you might know that there's a lot of things happening in the cust in the customizer development at the moment. Um, in addition to the editor and uh, those things, probably going to mix at some point. But I found this very interesting that this might be a step to eventually just editing things directly in the customizer and not actually jumping into the edit pane. So I think we have cool times ahead of us. Um, this is a screenshot or a video from the um, customized posts plugin that you can actually download from the WordPress uh, plugin repository where uh, which allows you to just edit posts directly in the customizer. I don't know if the uh, core is going to go this way or whether it's going to be more kind of block oriented, which is what I've heard. Uh, but nevertheless, you can try this out today and it, and it works pretty, pretty well. Uh, I hear there's still room uh, in my workshop tomorrow. So if you don't know anything about the customizer, this workshop is definitely for you. If you want to, we're going to go through again what, we, what I just showed you today and then a few, some, some extra examples, but if you're already like advanced, you have advanced knowledge of the customizer, then probably tomorrow's workshop is not for you. I should probably attend your workshop if you have advanced knowledge of the customizer. So thank you. Um, we are hiring, by the way. I work for Zealand Family. Um, so come and chat to me if you're, you're looking for a job. Um, Thank you very much.